Okay, so it's the next night. It's time to take these crazy clamps off of this thing and see how we did. That was definitely a nerve-wracking glue up for me, without a doubt. But that's not the only scary thing I have to do. I still have to carve the inside of that horn. And I wanna let this glue set a little while longer. You can see I've got some air bubbles in there, so I gotta address that and fill it with something, and then obviously the bevels. So this isn't 100% hard yet, a lot of this a lot of this glue is going to take a little bit more time to get rock hard. Typically about 48 hours is what you can expect, sometimes a little bit longer. But anyway, I'm not going to do anything with this insert just yet. What I hope to accomplish while this is fully curing is to get started on this nasty pickup cavity. I'm still going back and forth with whether or not to just fill this in and not reroute the jazz base pickup hole. So I want to know what you think. I mean, this, again, this base is never going to be original again. I'm having to plug here, I'm having to plug here, and a, the, the fretboard is scalloped, and I'm not going to fix it because I like the action too much. So I'm not really concerned about this being 100% original, um, but I would like this to have some versatility. So I can still get the P-Base sound out of, out of the P-Base pickup. The way I'm going to wire this is I'm going to do two volumes, in one tone, similar to a jazz bass. So I can still get that crystal clear P bass tone when I need to, that warm P bass tone, I should say. And then when I need a little bit more bite, a little bit more grit to cut through a mix, I can turn that volume knob on the jazz bass pickup in the bridge position and get that. So I think I wanna retain the jazz bass pickup. If you think I'm making a massive mistake, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to get the feedback. But ultimately, I think it'll be more versatile. I think it's the one good thing that they did when modifying this base, though I would have preferred that it had been left stock. Anyway, so it's time to start getting some measurements here. What I intend to do to solve for this is make one big square with rounded edges that match the round over on the router bit so I can it's so basically, it's going to be, well, let's draw some, let's draw some boxes here. What I want to do now is I want to measure it up and I want to translate it to this piece. I want to cut this piece first. And once I cut this piece, then I will put it back on here and then trace around it and cut the hole to match the plug. Um, I think that's going to be the best order of operations. Again, this is not meant to be an instructional or tutorial video because I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure this stuff out as I go. So that's my plug. All right, so I really don't have a miter box that I can trust with this cut, so I'm gonna use my homemade crosscut sled. Perfect, so it just barely, just barely covers everything. Got about an eighth on either side here. Then, as far as these uh, P-base P uh, round edges, it's just barely kissing it. I'm glad I did it a little over a sixteenth. So, just to give you perspective, I'm covering the back one just barely. And I've got about a sixteenth of an inch gap or uh, cushion, so this couldn't be any better. So now, what I need to do before I start routing is I'm gonna take the drill press and some Forstner bits and kinda level this here. 
uh, this this whole area here would be the same depth as that. So all that's got to get chewed away. I'm going to do that with a Forstner bit. I have acquired some brand new Forstner bits right here. They're dusty, they're dirty, but they've never been used. Not even once. Should I make their maiden holes be on this base? Probably not. So let me drill some test holes just to see what it can do before I start wrecking this guitar body. You know what I just realized? So I've got the speed set up all wrong. I had the fastest speed set up for sanding operation and I never put it back. All right, so that's how you change the speed on this one. And I am at, went from 35, from 3050 RPM, I'm dropping down to 1390. Probably go down. Let me go down one more. Go down to 900. 900 RPM. Let's try that. Just barely poke, started poking through. So what I'm going to do is that full drop, I want this to be at the lowest point of the cavity. Which I'm guessing is probably going to be right about there. So let's check that. There we go. So that's full droop, and I adjusted the table height to go with it. So I'm gonna lock this off. So it won't move on me. There's nothing left to do but to do it. So that's as much as I can get with the drill press. But barring this one mistake, I got a lot of that material out. I kind of trust myself with the router freehanding it more so than I do making a template and a jig because and using a bearing, bearing cutter because I've not really done that. So that said, I'm going to go with the devil I know versus the one I don't.
It looks a whole lot better than it did before. This is a scary, scary piece here of the build for me. So what I'm going to do before I make any more mistakes, because I was had a almost bad mistake here with the drill press and an almost bad mistake here with the router. So I'm going to take a pause, contemplate this, make sure I don't make a mental error and uh, do this the best way that I can. Okay, this is, this isn't working. It's just not working. It's, it's close, but it's not working. So the problem is, is obvious in my plan. <laughs> it was never a good plan to start with, but it was worth trying. So as far as making a template for the body, I may not be able to do that without going to the printer and printing this uh, full, full scale. I want to make a template for this block of wood to go into the body. I want to get used to the idea of using a router and a template for pickup cavities and things of that nature. So I'm going to get some practice in by making a template for this square first. So this is an Amana tool carbide tipped router bit. It's got a 3 8 inch diameter and it's got bearings on the shank end of the bit to follow the template with. And that's what I'm going to use to route this. And then also the reason why I chose the 3 8 inch diameter because I believe it's the exact same corner radius as um, the routes for at least this pickup template. I may have to, um, you know, massage it or get a smaller bit to do the corners for the actual um, jazz bass bridge pickup if I decide to add that in. So let's get started. Let's make this first template first. I need to rip this stock. Um, to roughly body width so I have plenty of clamping surface to keep it registered to the body. So I'm probably going to cut it right about, that's the widest part. So that's where I'm going to cut it. The problem is, is, because this doesn't cut a perpendicular line, the saw, that's actually a pretty tight fit. I was afraid that was too wide. So what I'm going to do is i got to kind of straighten this out. I've got to fix the corners and I'm going to straighten it out. So. I think we're going to have to do some filing and chiseling of this MDF.
Okay. Not too bad. And I gotta flatten this at least on the back on the back side. So first things first, I need to sharpen my plain irons. All right, so I've not used this router bit before. All right, let's do this. Before we do this on the actual guitar body, let's do it on something else. I like it. I think it's going to work. I do have to take the bit out a little bit so it'll actually have some depth to it, but I think this is going to work. I want you to see how little wiggle room I've got. I'm talking 16th of an inch. All right, let's glue this puppy. You love routers with no dust collection. <laughs> All right, I'm pretty pleased with this. So this is my very first router template. And I used it and it worked. I've got a super tight fit, probably so tight I don't even need clamps. I've got just enough wiggle room, about a sixteenth of an inch, maybe close to or closer to an eighth to plane down flush with the rest of the body. 
and then I can make up my mind. Do I want to put the jazz bass pickup back in the bridge position, or do I want to leave it stock? So I've got to decide what I want to do. So I'm not going to do that tonight. Obviously, I'm not, I'm not going to shape the horn either. What I want to do is I want to give this an opportunity to dry. I'm going to plane both plugs smooth, get started shaping the horn, and hopefully by the time I'm done shaping the horn, I will have decided what I want to do back here. All right, I'm back in the workshop. Tonight, what I want to do is I want to plane this flush with the body, this plug, for the jazz bass bridge pickup. I'm really pleased with how this turned out. Honestly, it turned out better than I thought it would. Uh, there's a couple of small gaps that are very, very minor. Um, I fully intended or anticipated having to do a little bit of patching around where this plug was, because uh, this is my first time doing anything like this. So I'm all in all, I'm very, very pleased with how it turned out. So I want to plane this flush with the body. I also want to plane the top of this plug for the lower horn flush with the body, and then start shaping the lower horn. I'm going to go back to my tracing paper method over my iPad and just focus in on just the lower horn. I'm pretty confident that I can get that part right. That's the plan. Let's get to planing. All right, so my intention, my intention is to use a pearl white pickguard. I ordered this because I thought I was going to go with this and Olympic white for the colors, but I changed my mind. So what I'm trying to do here is line up holes on the pickguard. That's right about there. So the majority of this seam is going to be covered by said pick guard. The only thing that's not going to be covered is this transition right here. And it appears I think I may be slightly off. All right, so what I want to do now is I want to just temporarily attach the pick guard with a couple of screws just to ensure proper alignment. And then also it'll help me to secure this paper that keeps wanting to move so I can transfer my lines. All right. So I'm going to probably cut right about here and bring the rest of the way in the same way that I shaped the inside edge here. So let's get into bandsaw mode and try not to screw this up too bad. I'm gonna just get this camera in super close so my mistakes are immortalized forever in crystal clear HD. It's 
The only thing I can do, because I can't make this curve because I'm hitting the back of the throat here. I mean, I can kind of get some of it, but I have to put a bunch of lines in here and then try and figure out, uh, uh, maybe dr drill them out with a drill press. I definitely need a bigger bandsaw. Couldn't make the uh, radius with the due to the throat depth of my bandsaw, so I had to do this. Let's see if this works. I think I'm still going to be in good shape. I think this these all these cuts are just going to make it easier to chisel it out. So let's get started. This is a great tool to have, but I need a dust collector and I need a bandsaw so I don't have to use it so much because I hate the mess it makes. It's about as far as I can get with the, band, with the belt sander and disc sander. Now I've got to switch to drum sander on the drill press. Too bad I don't have an oscillating spindle sander. Actually, I'm very blessed to have this setup that I have. But watching other YouTube makers build guitars with the right tools, man, it just makes me appreciate uh, how much the ones that don't have all that professional equipment have to actually do in order to come up with something that's, that's good and playable. So, anyway. That actually made really short work of it. Just two different diameter drums and she's starting to look like a P bass again. So I'm gonna sneak up on that line with hand tools. I think that's the best way to go. But I need to figure out what kind of filler I'm gonna to use to go between the bevel and then the patched piece of wood. Um, I'm gonna consult the distributor slash manufacturer of the nitrocellulose product that I'm using, which is Gracie's Vintage Finishes. Uh, distributed by Madison's Music. Again, this is not a sponsored build project. I paid full retail for the product I'm using in this build. This is the second time I've used them, so I'm pretty happy with them so far, even though I messed up the results on my jazz bass build. But maybe once it starts uh, getting to me bad enough, I'll refinish that one as well. But I don't want to make any of the mistakes that I made on that one. Again, that was my first time using nitro, especially uh, on a guitar. So. This one I want to get right, so I'm going to take some extra time to consult the experts, uh, the owner of Madison's Music. Again, this is a small family company. I think it's just him and his wife that run this thing. So I'm really super happy to give them my business and to really tap into their knowledge and know-how. He's done a ton of great, especially Fender builds uh, that you should check out as well. So I'm going to consult him, see what he says in terms of body filler to use um, that works well with his products. Who else is going to know more or know better than him? So that's what I'm going to go with. And hopefully by the next episode, we'll be shooting some sanding sealer and start with the Olympic white base coat and then maybe some Sherwood green. And hopefully by then I will have decided whether or not to put the jazz bass bridge pickup back in this body or not. Again, I feel like it's the easy way out to not put it in there. Uh, I feel like the challenge is, is 
definitely more leaning toward putting that pickup in, but at the end of the day, what's the right thing for the instrument? So I'm going to have a think about that and hopefully by the next episode, I'll be ready to make that call and I'll either be plugging this hole or I'll be routing a pickup cavity for the very first time. So until next time, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for following this build project. If you haven't seen the first episode where I dive into this base and tear it apart and, and strip the horrible finish off of it, go check that out and see how I got to where I'm at right now. Thanks again so much for watching. All your support is very much appreciated. We'll see you next time on The Basement. <laughs>